God, praise God, praise God. Someone say, in the nombre de Jesus. Hallelujah. We have a guest with us this morning. Amen. It's Sister Brenda's sister that's here with us. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to have her. It's the niña. Amen. All right, I'm just going to speak a few words in Spanish. I only know very little. A poder en el nombre de Jesús. A poder en el Espíritu Santo. Amen. She understood, huh? Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is power in the name that is above every name. The lovely name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be yet saved. Amen. Oh, under heaven, my, 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 for the name of God has been glorified and will continue to be glorified. We're going to ask Brother Cottrell, if he will, to come, amen, he and others that are to be of assistance, helping us in taking up our morning offering. Let's give and give as unto the Lord. And again, as always, we give in that lovely name, the name that is above all names, Jesus, amen. God bless you. It's my prayer as we continue to lift our voice in song. Brother Cottrell, amen. If you will, pray God's blessings upon this gift and offer. Lord God, we come to your name this morning. We just thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. Ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless this offering, Lord Jesus. Help us to give. Help us to be used to lead and instruct us, Lord. Oh, God, I ask you, oh, God, cut a lot of chapter from us, Lord. We just thank you for this day, Lord. Oh, God, I want to give you the glory for this day. Another day, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to continue to let us remember that all souls have a sin. Yes, Lord.
show work and you never stop you never stop working. come on god's working you never stop he's working the work for which no man can even when i don't see it your work uh -huh, yeah even, even when, when i don't feel it your work oh, you, you never stop you never stop you never stop working come on, he's you never stop you never stop working huh? even when i don't see it your work even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when, Even when I don't, don't see it, it you're working. Yeah. 
Lord never ceases to amaze me. Look to your neighbor and say, He's made the way. Because He is the way. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Without the way, there is no going. Amen. That's it, Cody. Receive. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Hang in there, girl. Amen, amen, amen. This morning's lesson was about the Lord walking on the water. Of course, there are times, there are moments that you'll read bumper stickers that say there was only one who walked on water. The truth of the matter is, is that there were two that walked on water. Jesus walked on water, but Peter, when called upon, walked upon water as well. This morning's lesson led us to know that prior to their crossing the raging sea in the fourth watch of the night, the darkest hour of the day, Jesus sent them aboard the boat, and they purposely, amen, aborted that boat to get to a certain place. But it was as if the Lord wanted for them to journey alone apart from him being there apart from him being present, if for no other reason, perhaps to teach them a lesson. They just witnessed one of the miraculous things that man could ever see and witness in this world, and that is to feed a multitude with five loaves of bread and two fish. And I can only imagine, along with that of Brother James, what they were discussing among themselves, saying, have we ever seen anything like this? And it was as if the Lord was saying, you're about to. <laughs> you're about to see something greater yet. <laughs> Amen. And Brother Trail, I go back. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> but you're fixing to. <laughs> you're fixing to. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. Hallelujah. Brother Cody. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead and discuss. It's all right. Amen. I don't want to interrupt anymore. Without any further ado, I'm going to ask that my brother come up here. And I would ask that he uh, speak. We had a funeral memorial slash memorial service in honor of my uncle yesterday morning. And so he had to make that quick trip down here and uh, he's going to be making that trip back home uh, today sometime and and uh, I said if you're staying over in the morning just be prepared to speak amen and so he, he he's here uh, 
I, I come to church anymore just expecting something. I said, Cheryl, I come expecting something. How many of you come expecting something today? Amen. If you came with great expectations, I can assure you, God is not going to let you down. Amen. We're going to be baptizing you before long, aren't we? Into the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I've already had some others come and tell me that they felt the need to be rebaptized. So I'm not going to deprive them of being rebaptized into the lovely name of Jesus. They have their reasons for that. Some of them were baptized at a younger age, yet not totally knowledgeable of their reasons for being baptized. Now, I was baptized at a considerably young age. There's times for which I just simply preach obedience is all you have to do. Amen. Just be obedient to the word. Be baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins. However, amen, I am inclined to believe that if you don't understand, you ought to do all you can possibly do to attain that goal of understanding. Amen. amen. Understanding full well what power truly exists within the lovely name of Jesus amen. in baptism. Amen. Amen. My, my, my. Well, I'm going to ask that he come up here. He asked me to bring these weights. And my thought was, well, is he going to ask for me to lift these weights today? <laughs> to do curls just to see if his brother can still do them or not. So I said, anyways, I don't, there's no telling what he's got up his sleeve. Amen. We're going to ask that he come up here and grace this pulpit in Jesus' name. And we're saying, in Jesus' name, God anoint the preached word here today. Amen. Thank you, Brother Hargrave. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, I'm nervous, but I'm glad to be here um, because I feel the presence of the Lord here today. I'm torn. Uh, I want to be home with family, but I prayed, actually prayed. Thank you. I prayed about this, whether to go home or to to stay. It's getting to be where uh, I, I want to be in the will of God everywhere, every day. And so, you know, I ain't going to lie, but I've never had that. I've not always had that mindset, like wake up on a Monday and think, well, God, you got a divine purpose for me today. But it's not, it's not that way anymore. I'm getting to war more and more. It's like every day God's wanting to do something for us, through us. And uh, so even in just coming today to be here, I was uh, told to let him know if I stay. And I told him I would. He said to be ready. And I said, well, I'll, I'm usually when I go to another church, I'm always ready. But I uh, texted him early this morning and said, Brother, I said, uh, you know, if, if, if you want me to preach, I will. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and get on the road, get home. He said, well, I told you to be ready. And I said, yeah. You know. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and be here because I did pray. In the last two mornings, I have woke up early in the morning, could not go back to sleep. And so I stayed and prayed as I was awake and sought the Lord. And um, just, just wanting to feel after God and. Uh, I, I had some things I thought I was going to say, and I think the Lord's really redirected me yesterday as to what to say for us here today. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn our attentions to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 First, First Corinthians chapter 9. And I don't know how this is going to turn out either. I'm not going to ask your pastor to lift these weights. But I'm going to have somebody help me lift these weights. I know, but I, didn't, I don't want to put you in that position where you're struggling. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's good to see all of, of you today, a packed house. I'm excited. I saw and walked around the building out back. I know you're looking forward to the day you can move in there. And, uh, to all of you that I've not met before, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to see new faces every time you go back to a church you've not been to in a while. And all you young people on the front, it's just a beautiful sight. And I uh, Just seeing people singing and liberty in the house, just, just it's no strain, it's no struggle to lift your hands or to lift your voice. I've been places where it's like I wanted to shout, but it's like, I'm not sure how they'll receive that, you know. But it feels good to go to a service and be a part of a church service and a group of people where they begin to worship and anybody uh, that, that might be struggling can feel a liberty to just reach out and cry out to God. It's a great lesson this morning by Brother McCarty, great spirit of the Lord here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I guess I better get there. Verse 24, Paul writes, and he says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. Now, we're living in a day and time where they want everybody to feel like a winner, so they give everybody a participation ribbon. And they don't really award the champ like we used to. But... Only one's going to win the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it, and that what let me break that down. What that is saying is if you want to be that winner, if you want to be the one to take the trophy home, you discipline yourselves. Now they do it for a corruptible crown, but you and I today, it, we're doing it for something incorruptible. So he says, I run, not as uncertainly. I fight, not as one that beats the air. You see, I've, I've seen a few kung fu movies when I was a kid. And somehow that, that dude's spirit got on me. And I, I took sticks and 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 I won every fight. I won every time because I was fighting the air. But in my mind, I had an enemy that I was, you know. Then he says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Next chapter, if you'll look at chapter 10 and go down to verse 13, one more verse, and I'll let you be seated. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it, bear it. Amen. I want to talk to us just for a little bit on this thought. Press on. Press on. Just press on. Amen. I... I, I don't want to just preach. I want to minister in the Holy Ghost. And hopefully with the demonstration and with what things I feel Lord has given me to say to us today that somebody's going to be encouraged. Somebody may have walked in this service and have thought to yourself, this this is it. If I don't have what I need today, I'm just going to quit. And I actually had a man last Sunday tell me, I'm trying, with the help of the Lord, to start a church in another town and had a man in a Bible study with me there. And he actually attends our church where I pastor now, but he lives in the city where we're trying to start a church at. So he's been coming to the Bible study. And he told me when he left a church recently that he was done. 
because he, he saw things that frustrated him that wasn't right. And I'm not saying he was right to, to give up or to quit, but he said, I was, I was done, and then my wife convinced me to come to your church. And, and he says, now I'm still in. I'm still here. And I, I just, I don't know, maybe there's somebody here that just needs ministering to, encouraged and told, now's not the time to quit. You got to press on wherever you're at, but you're going you're gonna to want to leave here today encouraged to keep going in the help of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Lord, I love you today, and I thank you for what I feel, for the encouraging words and lessons that we've already heard here today. What an awesome move of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you minister. Have your way, God. I'm nothing without you, Lord. <laughs> oh, God. Let somebody leave here inspired and never quit. Fresh anointing, fresh touch from on high, a breakthrough in their personal walk. In the name of Jesus. 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 God, I want to press on today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. I've read this passage a lot in the last few weeks, and it's been kind of working me over. I might bring out why it's worked me over and may not. I don't know. We'll see how the... It goes as we move along here. But when I was reading this, I, I follow some sports. And my, my boys like tennis. And there is, there is a tennis player who's considered, if he's not the GOAT, the greatest of all time, he is, he's on the verge of being considered the GOAT. His last name is Djokic. Djokovic, that's it, Djokovic. Thank you. I think he's a Serbian tennis player, but if you know anything about Djokovic, he's an amazing athlete, an amazing tennis player, and uh, he is very strict with his diet, and he's very strict with his workout regimen. And, and if you study the, the best of the best, these, these guys that reach the highest levels of their particular sports, you'll find that they... They work hard, most of them work hard to get where they're at. They have special diets. They're careful of what and how much they eat. They spend hours a day practicing whatever profession they're in or hoping to get in. They run. They lift weights. They do stretches. And, and we see, according to Paul's writing, what they're their ultimate goal is, it's put plainly, for a corruptible crown. A corruptible crown. They want to win the trophy. They want to win the Super Bowl or they want to win the MVP or they want to, uh, you know, set new records in that particular sport, whether it be home runs in a season or whether it be an outfield assist or whether it be the number of three-pointers, the greatest uh, three-point shooter of all time. And he set records that I don't know if in my lifetime or if any lifetime they'll ever be broken unless rules change or something is a guy who's currently playing for the Golden State Warriors. His name is Steph Curry. And Steph is a phenomenal shooter. And I, I've seen the highlights. I've seen his reels, highlight reels in games, in practices. I don't know if there's ever a shooter that has existed as good as this guy is. But his workout is incredible. His practice sessions are incredible. And they want those trophies, and they want those accolades. They want those things. They want to accomplish them, and their, their goal is to be the best in the physical realm. The physical, material things that are going to pass, that's what their goal is. And so they've disciplined their lifestyle, and their discipline is very rewarding and it's glorious, but those rewards and that glory last only for a season. Their name may go down in, in the Hall of Fame. They may be known uh, for a long time. They may have stats that will forever be recorded until Jesus comes. But 
But when that day comes, many of those things are going to be forgotten. Many of that's going to be behind us. And so if they can do it for that, if they can do it for that, Paul says, you and I, we need to run. We need to run the spiritual race. And he says, know you not that when they run, those that are in a race, only one obtains the prize. And he says, so here's how he puts it. He's, he's saying to you and to me and to the audience he's writing to at Corinth here, he is saying, so you need to run in a way that you're trying to be that one who wins. And, and you're doing it for something bigger than a corruptible crown. And so this morning, I just want to simply tell somebody, don't stop running. Keep running. Keep on. Keep it on. Press on. Now, everyone in the modern English version in verse 25 says, everyone who strives for the prize, they exercise self-control in, in all things. Now, they do it again for that corruptible, but we... So here's the message today. If they can exercise self-control and watch what they eat and make sure they put in their workout and make sure their health is up to snuff, then Paul's saying there's things in the spiritual that you and I need to be careful of. And we need to bring some things in control. Um, I taught Wednesday night at our church and... The lesson was about, uh, well, part of the lesson talked about how there are things that, that suppress our diet. And we have a kid that lives with us now. We have legal guardianship over, and there's a particular pill that he was taking when he came to us. He took one in the morning, and he took one in the evening. But I, I noticed that it, he never ate his lunch at school. And when he got home, he didn't want to eat much. That particular pill... Uh, suppressed his diet, so we took him off the evening pill and just gave it to him on his way to school, and man, his appetite went up, <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you, if the groceries don't get cheap again, we're going to take the, give him three pills a day, and uh, I think me and my wife might take one or two a day, I don't know, just because it's pretty expensive out there, but that pill suppressed his diet, but when we took him off that evening pill, he began to eat, and, and I'm telling you, he's growing like crazy. And so this, this morning, let me just say that we've got to be careful what we, we take in and what we do because if we, if we get too indulging with things in the world, it'll suppress the spiritual appetite. You, you, you'll find yourself not really wanting to go to church. And, and you don't want to hear no preaching, and you might not want to even open your Bible and read it during the week or find, folks, we've got to be careful what we do, where we go, what we look at, what we watch, because it will suppress our spiritual growth. we got to bring everything in self-control and discipline so that we can become the best that God wants us to be in our relationship with him. They exercise self-control. Paul encouraged his readers to run. He says, I run, not with uncertainty or uncertainly. This is the only time the word uncertainly is used in the Bible. And so what he's stating is that he has confidence that he's going to make it. He's going to make it. I, I, want, to, I want you to leave here this morning with certainty that you're not going to fall by the wayside and be lost. I want somebody when you leave this service... To have your mind made up, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. He said, I fight, but not a fight that's in vain. I keep under my body. Only two times the word in the New Testament under is used here, that particular Greek word. Paul is telling us and letting us know that hardships is there to help you Discipline. They're a form and a type of discipline. They're going to, they're going to, if you're walking and living for God, you're going to go through some things as Brother, Brother McCarty said this morning. But Paul was giving us a, a picture here that these trials 
is kind of like an exercise. It's kind of like a workout regimen. Okay? Now, I know there's things that God allows the devil to do, and then I know there's things that we put ourselves through, but then there's some testing and trying of our faith, and, and God wants us to grow. I mean, how many will say, man, I'm as good as I'm ever going to be spiritually? If you can say that, one of two things. Either, either you re- you're ready to just go to heaven right now, and God bless you, be translated, or you're deceived and you're lying. And, and I'm not where I need to be fully. I'm still working out. I mean, there's still trials coming, and I'm still learning how to press through and press on, and and it's not always easy, but I promise you this. I'm a stronger man today than I was two years ago. Maybe not in the physical, but I have more faith than I've ever had. I'm more confident than I've ever been in my relationship with God. Why? Because I was put under some things that didn't do me in, but they made me better. And the devil hates me for it. And he hates the church for it. He don't want to see you become a bigger man in the Holy Ghost or a bigger woman in the Holy Ghost. He don't want to see you. He wants you to cave under the pressure. He wants you to be destroyed. But I've got some news. He ain't going to give me more than I can bear. He going to put just enough. Now, I, I don't, the children of Israel had to learn to press on. They had to learn to press on. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, they had done spit 38, 39 years in the wilderness, watched their fathers die. These, this generation's coming up. And God is taking his people on a journey. He says in chapter 2, you've circled this mountain long enough. You've encompassed this mountain of Seir many days. He said, I'm ready to take you to your destiny. It's time for you to get where I had intended for you to be long before now. Now, I'm going to just be honest. Sometimes it takes God a while to get my attention and get me where he wants me to be. But I'm thankful for a patient God. I'm thankful for a long-suffering God. I'm thankful for a mighty God. Eventually, we're going to get there. The wilderness ain't going to do all of us in. Now, when you read chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, those first few verses, talks about how some didn't make it in the wilderness. They came out of Egypt, but they didn't make it in the wilderness. I just want to stop and pause here and say, just because you, you've, you've come out of the world don't mean you've arrived. It don't mean you're where God wants you to be yet. I'm glad you spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came. I'm glad you went down in the water in Jesus' name. That's all biblical. That's all part of the new birth. But now it's time to grow. Now it's, to be, it's time to become something in Christ. Now it's time to be something you've never been. Press on, church. Hey, man, you shouldn't be the same person you was five years ago. And if you can say, I'm not the same person, I'm better, you need to thank God I'm a better man today. I'm a better person. Now, in this crowd, we've got young, we've got small, we've got bigger and older, we've got wiser and dumber, and we've got all kinds of people in this place today. I don't know. you, you got to decide who's dumb and who ain't. I, I'm not here to be the judge on that this morning. But not everybody's at the same level. So I, I'm, I, come here, baby. I like those pink shoes. I would expect to be a little bit stouter than this girl. Now, I don't know her. She might know Kung Fu. She might know Taekwondo. I don't know. I'm not going to find out, okay? <laughs> but looking at it, you would think, I'm older, I'm bigger, I'm stronger. She's still a child. A beautiful child, I might say, but in a physical combat, I've got the upper hand, right? Again, I'm not going to find out because you might, <laughs> might embarrass me. Thank you. So there's a mix of us in this crowd. There's a mix of us, but, but she's not weak. For who she is and what she is and where she's at in life, she looks pretty fit. 
But she's going on to become something more. In a couple years, she ain't going to look just like that. She ain't going to be just like that. She's going to go through some hardships. She's going to face some challenges in life. But in a couple years, by the mercy of God, she's going to be a grown woman and much stronger and, and moving on in her life. I'm not what I used to be. You're not what you used to be. The children of Israel, they, they come out of the world, out of Egypt, but they didn't make it. They're struggling, and now they're coming through the wilderness, and God's taking them through some places, and, and he takes them over to, uh, to uh, the children of Esau, the Edomites. The, the, uh, the Edomites are the, the descendants of Esau, who was a son of Isaac. Isaac had Jacob and Esau, those twin boys, and and the Edomites, they, they come from their father who, who sold his birthright to his brother, who compromised, who gave what was rightfully his away to somebody who didn't deserve it. But that's who they were. And God said, on our journey to your promise, you're going to press through and you're going to have to pass by and you're going to see what I've done for them. And so... He takes them and he says, now when you go, don't, don't be afraid of them. They're going to be afraid of you. Take good heed to yourselves. Don't meddle with them because I'm not going to give you their land. He said, I gave them that land. He said, you can buy some meat from them. You can get something to eat. And if they'll let you buy water, that's fine. He says, because the Lord has blessed you and I'm going to take you somewhere. But this is a land that they Possess because I gave it to them. And he went on and he told them. He told Israel. He said, they had giants and I fought their giants. Let me tell you, some of the hardest things about your walk with God is going to be passing by that brother you know something about. And there, they've come into their blessing. And you're still trying to find yours. That's a trial. I come to this church sometimes and I look around and think, man, God, if you do it for them, you can surely do it for me. New building. I mean, but yeah, he's 10 years older than me, so I've got some time. You know? <laughs> and, and you hear about what God's done for this one and you heard it and you're like, God says, I'm going to take you by, don't meddle with them. Don't cheat on them. Don't try to take away what I gave them. That's theirs. You keep pressing on. And they don't stop there. God then said, now I'm going to take you by the Ammonites, whose descendants were from the incestuous relationship of Lot and his daughter. And he said to Moses and or said to Moses and the children of Israel, he said, Now tell Israel that they had giants in their land too. But I fought their giants and I gave them their. And sometimes, Brother David, the hardest struggle for me is seeing what God's done for others, knowing they're about their history. Knowing about their path. I mean, the Edomites, Esau sold his birthright. But you fought for him and gave him a position. The, the Ammonites and the, and the Moabites, you mean you're doing this for them and I know about their past? And, oh, God. Uh, you know, we can say what we want to, but God said, I had you on the brink of the promise before and you, you listen to ten foolish spies. And if you think that was bad enough, then after I told Moses you couldn't have it, you decided to rise up and go fight him when I told you I wasn't going to go with you. How stupid is that? I mean, why didn't you have that courage before I said you can't have it? When I told you it was yours, just go in and possess it. But now that I tell you you can't have it, you want to rise up and go in and try to fight? Come on, that's some of us. Some of us have a hard time believing God when he says he's going to do something because we've never seen him do it before, but when God says, okay, I won't do it because you don't believe I can, oh, well, I believe you now, Jesus. Oh, the fickleness of our humanity. He said, press on, the Ammonites, the Moabites. But there's a scripture 
that, that got a hold of me, it's found in numbers. And uh, pardon me if I take just a moment to try to, to find this, but in numbers, um, the 23rd chapter, I believe, something stood out to me. Chapter 21. I'm sorry. It's all right. I want to read this. Numbers 21, verse 14. Wherefore it is said in the brook of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon. Have you ever seen that? Now, now, I know what happened at the Red Sea. But does anybody know what happened at the Brooks of Arnon? Now, for there to be a comparison, there's got to be something. So, I, I got to studying. What happened at the Brooks of Arnon uh, was powerful. God's taken the Israelites past Edom, past Moab, and past the land of the Arnon, uh, the uh, Ammonites. And he's saying, look what I've done for them. But some of those people didn't want Israel passing through their land. I, I don't understand this altogether. But, but, but sometimes people can just stand in our way. Or sometimes things just get in our way. And God is trying, and it's God leading us where he's taking us. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and get this out there. I'm not going to be much longer. But if God's leading you to something, nothing can stand in the way. Are you with me? Now, I want to read something to you because I'm almost to my point. I read something recently about Arnon. And it's found in the Jewish encyclopedias that what happened, and I'm just going to paraphrase. I'm not going to read it. They, the enemy, some of these people, Ammonites and Moabites and uh, uh, Edomites, the Edomites and Moab, uh, Ammonites, they didn't really, they, they didn't want Israel to pass through. And the passage they thought they were going to take, they decided to send some of their people and hide them so when the Jews came passing through, they would ambush them. But God said, I tell you what, Moses, I want you to lead them on the high ground. And what I've read in the encyclopedia, Jewish encyclopedia, and what some of the Jewish scholars believe was that God allowed a flood from the books of Arnon to purge the enemy that was in hiding that was set to ambush all the Jews on their way to their promise while they were being led on the higher ground. And the whole time, they didn't even know what God was doing. We just sang the song, even when I don't see it, even when I can't feel it, God said, keep pressing on. This is what I've done for them, and this is what I've done for them. And, and God the whole time knows there's an enemy sitting trying to ambush you to keep you from arriving to your promise. But I'm here to tell you, when God sets his word in motion, when God's done declared some things, there's nothing, there's not an enemy. There's not a devil. they seen what he did at the Red Sea. They could see the Egyptians floating on top when God let the, but they didn't know what he was doing behind the scenes as they were pressing their way onto their prompt. You know what we've got to learn to do is not meddle with what God's done for everybody else. Don't get jealous that God did it for them. Don't worry about how he's moving in their life. If he's given you a promise, you press on. If you read the rest of Numbers there, 
you get to where they said, spring up, oh well. We know what, according to the Bible, happened at the Red Sea, but it said something about the wars of the Lord, what he did at the Red Sea and at the brooks of Arnon. And I think, what can compare with the Red Sea at the brooks of Arnon? That's what they read in Jewish. God says, stay on the high ground. Keep on. Because I know where they're at. I know what their plans are. The God we serve is ahead of our enemy. He knows the devil's trying to trip you up. He knows the devil's trying to destroy you. But he says, you just follow me and I'll take care of the enemy. Even when I can't see it, when I can't feel it, God is up to something. God is doing miracles right now under the sound of my voice. He's working a miracle for somebody in this place. Stay on the high ground. I need to stop. Y'all need to eat. And I need to go. Press home. Press home. Press on. I know they got their new building. Press on. I know they're having revival in South America. We in America, we're going to press on. I know Asian countries are seeing a harvest, but in America, God ain't forsaken us. There's still a church here. Government will fail us. People will fail us. Kings and presidents are going to fail us, but our God will never fail us. He still and will always be on the throne. Press on. Press on. So what do we got to do? Get rid of junk. Don't, don't get in stuff that's going to suppress your spiritual appetite. Quit going to places or doing things that's going to weigh you down. It could be anything. Get a hunger. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. I will not let them down. They shall be filled. Chapter 10, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians. What does it say? Let's get there real quick. Read it, read it brother. Nothing, 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 nothing. We all gonna we all gonna face things. There's two things I want to point out. We all gonna face things, and God's faithful. We all gonna face things, but God is faithful. And he ain't gonna let something come on you that's too big for you. That's too hard for you. He's going to make a way of an escape. So, so last Sunday, the Holy Ghost was moving. I didn't really get to preach. But as I, was, as I was exhorting at the end of the service, I began to think about that scripture. It hit me. And I thought I'd use this right now. Now, these look heavy. Oh, Lord. I need some help. Come on, Bob. I like that purple. Now, I want you to lay down on your back. And I want to hand these to you, okay? Now, I don't think these are too heavy for you. Brother Hargrave might it might be for him, but you see, that's it. Those are his. 
Now, Paul had just got through in chapter 9, at the close of chapter 9, talking about how trials or difficulties, if you look at them, it's, it's a workout. God, God's, God sees where you're at. Now, how many of you have ever heard of a spotter? You know what a spotter is? Tell me. In case, because when you're trying to reach your max to do what you've never done before, you have a spotter, and his purpose is twofold. One, he's watching you, and he's saying, come on, Bubba, just one more time, and you'll break that record. You'll, there you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. You've got this. But just in case. Just in case this time ain't it, you've got somebody say, just act like you can't do it. <laughs> now holler at me. Get this off of me. You got a spotter that says, all right, we, we're okay. That didn't do you in. It didn't crush your neck. It didn't break your skull. I'm here because I'm, my job is to make sure this don't hurt you while you're trying to get bigger and better and stronger. So we get another chance. We wonder what, sometimes why are we going through the same things? Come on, you did four that time. I want you to do five this time, buddy. You've had a few days. Huh? Come on, you've got this. You've got this. That's it. Oh, yeah, you can do it. You can do it in Jesus' name. Somebody's going through something right now. Somebody's facing a trial right now. You don't know why you're facing it, but you do something you've never done. One more. Got it. That's in the weight. Anybody that's in the weight lifting. Every time they make a new milestone or break a record. Listen to me. Here's what we're going to do in closing. If there's one person or if there's five people, we're going to take time right now. That if you're feeling like you're under some duress, no, I want those. And you're going to help me be a spotter. We're not Jesus, but we just saw where our God is faithful. He ain't going to let something on you that's going to crush you. But he is in this to build you up. To build your faith. To build your spiritual man. To build your courage. If, and we won't let this hurt you. But if there's somebody here, now we're not going to let the ladies lay down and lift weights. But we're going we're gonna, to, if you want to come and pick them up, just pick them up. And you need some help. The Holy Ghost. Brother Betrayal. Come on. I think you can handle these weights. Come on. Brother Betrayal, I want to start with you, sir. But me and him's gonna be on each side of you. I don't know if you're going through anything or not, brother. Are you? Well, here's what we want you to do. Don't hurt your back, but reach down. We're gonna help you. And just start being, you got this, Bubba. You got this. Yeah, yeah, this ain't gonna do you in. Let's see if you can let's see if you can do it up higher. Oh, there you go. See if you can get that up higher. Come on. Hey, you got this. In the name of Jesus. That's more than you did last week. You broke a record, Bubba. In the name of Jesus, you've got that. God is faithful. God is faithful. You got one more? Come on. God said we're going to break another record. Brother Betrayal, you've never reached this milestone before, but the Holy Ghost is saying you got this. In the name of Jesus. Are you going through something? I asked him if he's facing any trials right now. He said, a tidal wave's hitting me. We just read or heard a lesson by Brother Betrayal, how he walks on water. And we just heard how he's faithful and won't let nothing come on us that we can't bear. I know he's shaking, but you've got God going to help you reach a milestone in the Holy Ghost. Brother Betrayal, come on. No, we won't pick it over your head. You just reach out. We'll go. That's what we're here. In the name of Jesus. Whatever. This is symbolic. But I'm going to believe God. 
I'm going to believe God that he's fixing to lift this weight. And in the name of Jesus, any trial he's going through, any lies, the devil's telling him, you got this. God ain't going to let you down. God's with you. He won't put more on you than you can bear. Go ahead. Let it go of it. He said, let go of it. He wants to put it down by self. In the name of, I know that's physical, but we've got an incorruptible crown. We've got something we're pressing on to. We're believing God for supernatural power from on high. I love the idea, Brother Horn. I've got in my, I've got in my mind right now, the Lord saying, you've got this, but just in case. Come on, you can do it. Anybody else? I want you to lay hands on him. I want you to pray for this man right now. I feel the Holy Ghost breaking out in this service right now. He ain't going to put more on you than you can handle, Brian Orrin. Come on. It's just a workout session, but your spotter's there. The spotter's saying you're going to be all right. It's not going to do you in. Even when I don't see it, even when I can't feel it, One more. You got it. You broke a record. 